Fishbowl Thinker is brought to you by Lowrance. Find, navigate, dominate. Sportsman's Warehouse. Gear up for unforgettable. Dodgers and flashers trolling them. It's just a big shiny piece of metal that adds an erratic action and a ton of flash and vibration to your presentation. Here today I wanted to demonstrate it because if the wind's blowing, this gives me a really good chance to retrieve my bait and still get, uh, still get lots of bites. So I took a great big spoon. This is a big old half ounce Johnson Silver Minnow spoon right here. It's very shiny. I chose a rainbow trout color just because we're fishing in a rainbow trout lake, but it's exceptionally shiny. There's a dropper that's that long, and that dropper is four pound uh, fluorocarbon. And then there's a little tiny hook back here at the back, a number six little hook right here at the back. This now becomes my casting weight and my dodger, so to speak, my attractor. This is what the fish will come to look at, but it's way too big for them to eat. So then they grab the power bait on the back because it's what draws their attention and they get a chance to see it. So this type of a rig, should the wind have gotten really crazy today, would have been exceptionally effective. If we get a windy day here, you fish some of the places in South Park or whatever, the wind always blows, something very shiny like this will draw a lot of fish and you can catch them with your power bait. So funny, dude, they like that shiny little spoon. They look at the spoon and then they all of them look and saw the power bait. And once they get in the shallow water in here, I'm noticing they're, they're a little spookier now that the light's up. And first thing this morning, you know, in other words, 30 minutes ago, we could easily pick them off right here in front of us. And now they're spooking when they get up against the front of us. So that's the other part of the reason of me trying different stuff, just to show you guys, you know, first of all, there's always more than one way to catch them. And two, uh, we can catch them without gut hooking them. Okay. Uh, that guy just wrecked it, just wrecked it. I saw him look at the spoon and turn around and he blasted that thing. Yeah. And you guys can see the spoon and the size of the fish. And again, because I'm retrieving this bait, I don't have to worry about gut hook, even though I just caught him on power bait and a little tiny hook. If you look, that hook is right in the corner of his mouth right there. So it'll come right out. Right there in the mandible, perfect little stalker trout. Put him back because we don't want anything to do with him. And there is my rig, guys. I have a dodger. Effectively, I have a flasher. That spoon's too big for catching any of these fish. But with this little hook back here, a couple feet behind it, and a piece of power bait on there, I've thrown it about eight times. It's been bit like five. My hookup ratio hasn't been great just yet, but I'm still fine tuning my rig. But the point being, even if it got windy or something today, I can still fish my power bait, still get these stalkers to bite one after the other without a tremendous amount of, of effort. And I can do it in the wind or I can do it in the calm and I'm not gonna gut hook any of the fish. All these fish can very easily be released with a little hook in the corner of their mouth. So the rod I chose to do this with today is actually a five foot eight. It's actually a Fenwick, uh, not my usual Abu Garcia stuff because I wanted an ultralight or a light powered rod and Abu Garcia stuff more fun focused on uh, bass and walleye type fishing. This rod is exceptionally uh, limber. If you look, it's a very, very limber rod and that's really good for dealing with the size of the fish we knew we were going to be dealing with today. This was not a trophy fishing show, although if I went somewhere where there was bigger trout, say Antero Reservoir, this would work just as well. I, I'm certain of that. The very light little rod also allows you to uh, cast the bait without lobbing the bait off the hook, and only one time the whole day did, or the whole morning did I have the bait come off the hook and that one had already been cast and retrieved a whole bunch of times. So it's, I, I, intuitively I would have said the power bait would come off the hook if you're gonna retrieve it a bunch, but that turned out to not be the case. It stayed on the hook just fine until the trout snatched it off there, which I was okay with. I'm using a little single, uh, single shank hook, not a little treble hook. There's no bait spring or anything like that on there. I wanted to keep the hook as small and light as possible. Uh, this one right here happens to be a number four, I believe. Yeah, it's a number four hook, and it's got a little barb that'll hold the 
the power bait a little bit on. It's actually a soft plastic hook like I would rig a four inch power worm on, which would be a little bit different scenario. Um, I've got a swivel just above it on the line right here. And that swivel is to allow that power bait to spin around back there without creating a bunch of line twists for me. And then I've got a split shot on the running line above it. The running line is Nanofill, it's four pound Nanofill. And so between having the light rod, the very light Nanofill, and the four pound 100% fluorocarbon leader right here, it's a very finessey presentation. It's perfect for the size of the trout I have right here. <laughs> all right guys so if you notice we got a bunch of wind chop now and in our effort to show you all the different ways we can catch them with power bait without deep hooking fish we tied a bobber with no weight so i'm casting only the weight of the bobber on the little ultralight and by doing so it's very responsive and is once again hey 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 if you look if i get this fish to hold still the hook is right in the tip of his snout. I don't even need pliers to get a hold of it. Ta-da, ta-da, piece of cake right there. So I literally, it's the same rig I had before, guys. I took all the weight off it. It's just, I put the bobber ahead of it on the swivel, above the swivel. So if anything, the weight of the swivel is pulling it down and the same little straight shank hook right there. And uh, because I have the wind, the bobber will move up and down. You get a classic crappie chop or a walleye chop, depending on where you're from, the bait moving up and down. As soon as I put the bobber back on and threw it out there, we're bit again. So, so far today, we've caught them retrieving power bait with no weight. We've caught them just formed into a shape, I should say. Uh, we caught them using weight and also formed into a shape. We caught them using shapes trolled behind a spoon that I'm casting. And then also we've caught them on the bobber. So the, the point being is there's lots of ways to rig your power bait such that you're not going to be deep hooking fish and yet still catch lots of fish in whatever conditions you run into. One of the key things that we figured out for today was not only the shape of your power bait uh, and how it spun, but the size as well. In the beginning, I was using, I was able to get away with uh, less action on the bait because the fish were feeding more aggressively and I could get away with less action on the bait. As the day went on, and we were a couple hours in, the sun got a lot higher and hotter out, I needed the bait to spin faster to get the fish to bite it. But I can do that very easily just by how I mold it. In 10 seconds, I've got a completely different action out of my bait. So pretty slick scenario all the way around, and, uh, and something I'm just learning, and I'm not shy about that kind of thing here, I'm a fishful thinker, but rest assured, I will use it again in the future anytime we show up at a place that a power bait would be appropriate. Here's one right here, I'm gonna catch this guy. No way, dude. Got him. Okay. <laughs> you can also sight fish him with him. Oh, easy. He's trying to jump on the bank. You can also sight fish him with this stuff, guys, because I can see the fish and I can respond. I can. So as soon as I see one pop on the surface out here, I can throw the bait to it. I can wind it to get his attention, and then I can pause it right when he gets to it and and i'm just trying to illustrate that just because i'm fishing with bait with power bait doesn't mean come out of there there you go buddy a single barbless there just because i'm fishing with with a, with a bait you know a power bait that was is traditionally sat on the bottom and not moved or floated from the top the discussions I had with the Europeans is that, hey, if by molding into a shape and retrieving it, you have the best of both worlds. And, and as I'm learning the technique and the nuances of it, um, right away I'm figuring out that it's still just like lures. The, the, the size may be very important, the speed may be very important, the shape or the way it spins is very important. And so in that case, I went a few casts in a row, didn't get any bites. I downsized the bait and made it spin faster by the shape and just like that we're bit again and then as fish come up behind it I just pause it out let it settle and he'll eat it oh that one doesn't spin right so you can see my shapes not spinning right and that fish literally turned completely away from it and that's an important thing so I'm learning this as we go a little bit guys now I, it's one thing to talk to a European guy on the phone that's very good at it it's another thing to fish with a guy that's done it and I haven't had a chance to do it so I'm adjusting my bait shapes a little bit on the fly in that particular case, the fish didn't want anything to do with my bait. 
uh, and, it, and I realized right away that the thing's not spinning and I want it to spin. I want it to have action in the water. And so I'm going to keep working on it until I get it to spin. But because power bait's moldable, I can just keep doing that and I can change the shape. Effectively, if I was fishing with, say, a spoon, I can change the shape of my spoon with my thumb. So now we've got a little different shape and we'll see how that one goes. And oh, 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 I had one bump and get away with it. That's not fair. I'll settle it and see if he'll come back for it. <laughs> I saw him grab it and he didn't get the hook, the little single hook on there. And it's funny because not all of them, just like with lures, not all of them will grab it. But oh, that one grabbed it and got my bait off of there. So apparently my molding technique needs a little bit of work. But as you guys know, we're always honest with you at Fistful Thinker. And, um, I'll keep playing with that. I might put a more short shank hook on here so I can get an even smaller one as I fine tune. The way the guys, that, the European guys were doing it, um, their baits were considerably bigger, but so were the fish they were fishing for. In this particular lake where we're at, the fish are quite a bit smaller. So it's a little, little nuance that you guys have to keep track of. If I was going someplace that had bigger trout, I'd probably throw a little bit bigger piece of bait. We're gonna see what happens here. Comes his buddy. Oh, got a refusal. Oh, oh, his buddy chased his other buddy off. Got that one. <laughs> oh man, it's so funny because. We talk up all the time, for guys that watch our show, uh, for more expert stuff, we talk about, oh, it's the jerk that gets their attention or the pause that gets them to bite. We talk a lot about the, the drop, when you throw a lure and it starts dropping uh, through the water column, that's when you get them to bite. Well, these fish, because I can see them and because I have such an effective little bait, they come cruising up behind it. And as soon as I see them coming, then I can go ahead and, and uh, pause it and let it drop and then they'll get it. And I want to point out that this particular rainbow, look where the hook is, guys. And we keep saying this over and over again. Look at the hook. Right in the corner of the mouth, nothing to it. I'm not hurting any fish. I'm not going to gut hook anybody, which is a lot of times a big knock on guys that are fishing a static power bait is the fish will absolutely swallow it. Berkeley did a good job of coming up with a formula the fish will eat. Uh, what we all need to learn as Western anglers here that, hey, it's not necessarily a static presentation. Maybe I can wind it and make it a lot more fun. And if you're fans of this show, you know, first of all, that we don't fish bait ever. I mean, basically literally ever in 330 episodes. The reason I feel like that this is important is such a high percentage of people do. And you don't have to just sit here and wait for bites. These guys over here behind us haven't caught any fish yet since they got here. They've been here as long as we have, basically. And they've got bobbers out and they're not getting the bites, but by me retrieving a bait, I can watch the fish turn and they'll start following it. I can pause it, it goes down. As soon as it starts to go down, they eat. Fishful Thinker is brought to you by Berkeley, your fish, our science. Abu Garcia, fish to win. Sportsman's Warehouse, gear up for unforgettable. One of the things that the Europeans taught me also is that they're mixing colors of power bait to, to get a specific color that they want and twisting them together to make it look like it has even more action. They're, they're literally building strobe effect into it by having a bait that's dark on one side and light on the other. The difference between here and there is that this water is really clear and the ponds that they're fishing most commonly there are not as clear as here. When I tried to the strobe effect here, what I got was follows and not bites. So what I found today was a single color was my best bet, was just my orange. This is the one that ended up working the best for me today. Having said that, power baits available in multi-color packs, so you don't have to buy all the different packs, and you can very easily twist this into, into whatever color combination you would like to do. What I would be inclined to do would be to do a really bright color and a more sedate color, uh, something like that, but you can mix and match your colors within your shape, no different than a multicolored spoon you would see or a multicolored lure of some sort. Got that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh man, that's pretty funny, guys. I got a little more ambitious on the hook set because we have lost some fish. And once again, I want to point out, you can see the hook in this guy right here, right in the tip of the snout. And the one knock that people have always had on bait fishing for trout is that everybody gets deep hooked. Well, you can see the hook right there. I haven't even touched the fish. No shenanigans here yet. Easy fish. There's the hook. I have a hold of it. You can see it's right in the corner right there. It don't even, there'll be nothing to it. It came out just like that. And there he goes. All right, guys, I'm all wet. He got me all wet. We've made it work over and over again. So it was our goal to show you how effective power bait can be without just being static, without just hanging it under a bobber, sitting under, you know, floating it up off the bottom. It can be a very active presentation. And the side bonus to that, which is significant, is that we've probably caught 20 fish today. Not one of them has been hooked anywhere but the corner of the mouth or the top of the, of the snoot. They're not being hooked at all deep. And it's a single hook, you know, a little barbless hook. It's got a barb on it here to help hold down at the base, to help hold the power bait but it's just a single little hook. It's, it's four pound fluorocarbon and four pound nanofill and a split shot and a swivel. So simple, guys. So, the, but the key is molding it to give it some sort of action. So if you start molding it and playing with the bait until you watch it, the water in front of you, until you get an idea of how it's working. As soon as I got him to spin consistently and at a high frequency, a real fast spin, is when we started getting bites like every single cast. So it's worked out really good. If you guys wanna join the conversation on Facebook uh, or Instagram, that's at Fishful Thinker. We'd appreciate that. We'll also have some bonus videos for this on our YouTube channel. That's also at Fishful Thinker. Please subscribe while you're there. There's more than 300 videos there, but most importantly, we hope you'll tune in and we'll see you next week. As far as I can tell, that's pretty close to what they call the ducky. Oh, there's one and got that sucker. There's the hook guys, right in the corner. Just like that, hook's already out. Fish is no worse for the wear. Perfect little stalker trout. See you, buddy. There we go. Oh my God, he's off. How did he come off? That's a bunch of hooey. Got him. <laughs> oh, dude. He did get the bait that time. Come on now, Chad, pay attention. Boo. <laughs> oh, got bit. Got bit again. Oh God, he had it a couple times. That worked pretty good. <laughs> I think I might try that again. Come on now, did that just happen? Cut for a second.